Hey everyone, welcome back to Watch with Kuda. I'm sure a lot of you have heard the news. Studio Ghibli has released their first ever 3D animated movie and oh my goodness, it's currently trending in the Ghibli Universe fandom. Some love it, some don't, some don't even know what the hell was going on, like me exactly. So, Earwig and the Witch is directed by Goro Miyazaki, son of the legendary Hawaii Miyazaki, who made masterpieces such as Kiki Delivery Service, Spirited Away, Princess Mononoke, and so much more. Goro Miyazaki is not new to creating Ghibli movies. He has directed one of my favorites, which I remember up to now, called Up from Puppy Hill. I really love that movie. So, Earwig and the Witch is about Earwig who got dropped at an orphanage as a baby by a mother who promised one day she was coming to get her back. When Earwig is all grown up, she did not want to get adopted, she did not want to leave the children's home, but she had no choice in the matter when this couple comes and wanted to adopt her. Earwig packs up against her will and heads off to leave with these two characters, Bella Yaga and Mandre. It turns out these two people who adopted her are witches and the only reason why they adopted um, Earwig is because Bella Yaga just wanted a servant, an assistant to assist her in cleaning up after her magic, clean up duties. If Earwig refuses, Bella Yaga was gonna threaten her with worms and so much more happens in the story as it unfolds. So in Earwig and the Witch, the characters basically for me personally, they are not interesting at all. From the main protagonist, I don't think we have an antagonist, but they don't really help make the story interesting. We are introduced to our main character, our main protagonist, Eowig or Erica in the movie, who is basically a douchebag. Her main goal in the movie was just to try to manipulate people. We see that from the very first beginning of the movie when the kids do something really naughty at night and when that is discovered, Erica or Earwig tries to manipulate the caretaker of the children's house, the owner of who looks after the children to, man, to forgive her, to try to escape from trouble. That's the only thing that she does. And when she gets adopted by Bella Yaga and Mandre, that's the main goal that she just keeps doing again in the story, try to find a way to manipulate Bella Yaga and Mandrake so that they can listen to her. I felt like it just ended up being repetitive and boring for me. I had to pause for a moment because I got bored because nothing wasn't happening that really interested me with this character. I wasn't invested exactly with what she was doing in the story. We also get a chance to be introduced to Balayaga, the one who also adopts um, Erica. She's a witch. She makes magic potions for clients. And she only needed um, Erica to clean up after her. If she did not listen to Balayaga, Erica, Balayaga was going to threaten her with worms that she would eat at night she again wasn't that interesting very much and i wasn't again invested in these characters they don't do much we have mandrake or mandrake i don't know if he's a devil or something from the looks of the ears he looks like the devil and the eyes he spends most of his time in his room writing stories and that's basically it. They do try to do flush out, you know, the background of the characters, but it wasn't that interesting very much in the story. 
So the characters overall, all of them, were not that interesting. You know what? As a Ghibli fan, the thing that makes their stories amazing is the environmental scenes that we get the chance to see. For example, in Spirited Away, we get to see a lot of those environmental scenes. For example, the bathhouse. It's amazing. We also get the chance to see a scene where Chihiro is crying in a field of grass and Haku tries to come and comfort her. That scene is amazing. We get the chance to see Chihiro on the train. That is also amazing. Each short when the train is traveling is really amazing. So it expands the whole story because it's not limited. But now with Earwig and the witch, the setting of the story is only set inside the house. It is limited. You only see Bela Yaga's room, you only see Airwick's room, we only see the kitchen, and we get the chance to see Mandrake's room. So watching this, it's not magical because we are just limited to one scene alone in the movie. We don't get the chance to explore the universe of Earwig and the Witch. That is my own point of view, which makes it not magical, makes it not interesting to watch because it's only that and it's not fun. It wasn't entertaining. I wanted to see more of it. I wanted to explore that universe of Earwig and the Witch. It kind of ends up getting boring because the only thing that we get to see in the story is only happening inside the house. And it wasn't that fascinating. And it was just like we were put in a box and that was basically it. I feel like the writers of the story should have found a way to go out and explore more of the story get the chance to see the other rendered scenes not try to confine the story in just a house alone and i feel like that's why again made the story very short only one hour and 30 minutes watching earwig and the witch i can't say that the character designs were terrible the art style was terrible they tried to mimic the 2d art style that we see in ghibli animated movies and try to implement that in 3d but for me when i saw the still images that were released and the trailer when it was released i wasn't impressed by the cgi of earwig and the witch I recently watched Lupin the Third, the 3D animated movie, and oh my god, mwah, it is marvelous, it is appealing, it is that Disney level standard of CGI, and I love all of it. I have seen Guns of the movie, and mwah, again, the CGI of Guns of is brilliant it's top notch and here we are we are given earwig and the witch cgi that looks like nickelodeon cartoons of the old i'm not sure which exactly to give an example to but the cgi is not appealing at all it's like budget friendly cgi that was used in this animated movie i would have rather appreciated they took their time to look at all the cgi i was i would have loved if they tried to copy disney cgi and not give us this kind of cgi i had hoped the story would be the one to carry the movie and throw away the CGI but both the CGI and the story for me kind of fails and at the end of the game we get bad CGI and a really bad story 
which I thought was incomplete. As a first attempt to CGI from a studio such as Studio Ghibli, personally for me, they felt they could have done better because we have seen CGI that is out there from Chinese animated movies to Disney to DreamWorks to Winner Brothers and they could have done better and provided us with better CGI than this. It's not that terrible that it's mediocre but it's not the CGI personally for me I wasn't expecting to see from a great studio like Studio Chip. So Earwig and the Witch, the way it ends, it's like it's about to begin to continue where it left off from the very first beginning of the movie. It just basically cut, cuts off that story that third act and i was disappointed because i was also interested in seeing where it was about to go i don't know why they limited the runtime not giving us that information but i was disappointed overall ear week and the witch is one of the poorest ghibli movies i have ever seen i was hoping the story would be great but it is not it feels like it's just confined in a box the war story is just stored in a house and it was not that really good and i felt it was just getting repetitive over and over again in my own opinion the characters were not that appealing the main protagonist was just a kid who tried to manipulate adults to bend to her will with their cuteness but it just got boring because of she just tried to keep repeating the same thing over and over otherwise have you seen earwig and the witch if you did what are, are your thoughts drop them in the comment section below and i'm also interested which is your favorite Ghibli movie you have ever watched. Drop it in the comments below and do not forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.